Hi everyone, my name's Shelby and you're watching Read and Find Out. So today I'm going to be doing a spoiler-free review of The Orphan Band of Springdale by Anne Nesbitt. I received a finished copy of this book through the Early Reviewers Program through Library Thing. So I'm going to give a brief summary of what this book is about, talk about what I liked, what I didn't like, and then give you my star rating. This is middle grade historical fiction taking place in 1941 in Maine, a small town called Springdale. So this book is taking place just before World War II and you can really feel that in the atmosphere of the book because the war, the impending war, is referred to quite a bit. The protagonist of this book is Augusta Neubronner. She is a French horn playing, visually impaired 11-year-old girl who is moving from New York City to Springdale, Maine to live with her grandmother who runs an orphanage of sorts. Augusta, or Augusta as she prefers to be called, is moving in with her grandmother not because of any tragedy or anything per se with her parents, but because her parents really can't afford their life. <laughs> and also her father is a foreign-born labor union organizer who is kind of on the run at the moment. Because as he is German-born and this is just before World War II, there's a lot of suspicion around people who are foreign-born or around people in general who don't seem American, whatever that actually means. There's actually quite a bit of an examination of that question in this that was very well done for middle grade. There are some recurring things in this story that are important for Gusta that I really liked, particularly the French horn. On the back it says, Gusta loved the golden sound of her horn, the way the notes could make you ring like a bell from your hair bow to your toes. Its music was so large and grand. She was quiet by nature, but the horn was the bravest part of her. Her sweet, large, secret, brassy voice. You probably didn't know this, but I played the French horn from ages 11 to 18 or so. So I really resonated with Gusta in that, and you could tell that Anne Nesbitt had someone in her life, which was her mother, who played the French horn based off of the descriptions of the French horn and the way that it sounds and the way you have to like shape your mouth to make the specific noises and even things like people making fun of her case or asking like is she hiding bodies in that or something because the French horn case is shaped funny. And so I was just having all these middle school flashbacks of kids asking me if I was toting around dead bodies in my case. So I just felt that quite a bit. <laughs> And this book includes some family drama and a little bit of mystery involving specific aspects of family drama and then also family history related to this concept of a wish. So that's another thing that kind of recurs throughout the story. It's not a huge part of it, I would say. It's like fake magic, just a little bit of imagination added into this book that was sweet. You wouldn't have gotten away with it in something like YA or adult, but because it was middle grade, it felt appropriate. So that is the basic gist of this story, is that Augusta is going to live with her grandmother and adjust to this small town life, which has some prejudices because her last name is Neubronner, which sounds foreign. And her making friends and her family relationships and her French horn playing and her love of music, these are all things that keep happening and keep coming up in this book, which I thought was really sweet. So some things that I liked about this book, heads up, there are a lot. I loved Gusta as a character. Gusta was sweet and thoughtful and she felt like a real 11 year old and that sometimes she said or thought things that weren't very mature, felt fitting for her age group. But she's also brave and she's striving to do the right thing. Because her father is a labor union organizer, she has a lot of awareness around issues of justice and treating people fairly. And that comes up even though she's a fairly shy and quiet girl, she forces herself to speak up when she thinks that something isn't right. And I appreciated that so much in this 11 year old girl. I thought it was really sweet and brilliantly done. An example of that is when she's doing errands for someone for some small compensation and they tell her what they're going to be paying her and she says, actually, I'm sorry, you probably didn't know this, but current minimum wage is this and what you're offering is like five cent less than that or something. <laughs> but she was thinking, oh, I don't know, that doesn't sound right to me. <laughs> I thought it was really cute. <laughs> Another example that has to do with Anne Nesbitt's writing style, it also has to do with Gusta as a character, is her interaction with a, a character named George. 
Now George comes from a family who is French and at one point it's brought up that his name is actually spelled with an S at the end. It's not pronounced any differently, it's just George with an S at the end. And he makes it out like, oh, it's not a big deal though, like you never have to actually write it like that or anything. And Gusta asks him, I, but does it matter to you because it's your name? And he says, well, yeah, I mean it does. But then she's like, okay, well, I will think of it with an S then when I think about your name, which I thought was cute. And then throughout the remainder of the book, George is spelled with an S at the end, where up until that point, it was not. That's just a little detail that I really appreciated. As I mentioned earlier, there is an examination of prejudice and what does it mean to be a real American, and also patriotism potentially as a cover for prejudice. So for example, in this small town, there are people who have prejudices and who are suspicious of people that they, who they think don't seem like typical Americans or who are foreign born or sound like they might be foreign born. And often that's used to invalidate or to sweep aside any actions that the people who are suspected of being foreign born are taking so that they're not taken seriously while they're just saying, oh, but it's really because we want to promote these American values that they're using that to discriminate. It's really interestingly done and it's something that I think could actually connect with middle grade readers. So social issues and interests are really key in this book, they're underlying like the entire thing. And also immigration and that kind of as an experience because, as I said, Gusta's father is German born and that has implications for him and then the implications that it has for Gusta. Even though she's lived here her entire life, I just have never read a middle grade book that handled these topics so well in a way where it connected with me as an adult, but I think it would connect with middle grade readers as well. And honestly, I don't have any dislikes with this book. If you don't like middle grade, then you probably wouldn't just like this just because it has some of that more middle grade language. But I think that if you're at least tolerant of middle grade that you could probably enjoy this. I definitely did. So it shouldn't come as any surprise that I gave this 5 out of 5 stars. Thank you to Library Thing and Candlewick Press for sending this my way because I adored this. And as someone who wants to work in a middle school setting, I think that this book could bring up great discussion points for like small group or in classroom and that it could be integrated into the curriculum in the school as well as the school counseling guidance curriculum. Like, I just was making a bunch of connections when I was reading this book and I loved it. Anyway, that is going to be it for this video. Comment down below and let me know if you are interested in reading The Orphan Band of Springdale. It came out less than a month ago and I highly recommend it. Thank you for watching, I hope you have a good day, and until next time, 